Okay, it's six o'clock, so I'm going to go ahead and take roll call. Um, Commissioner Abrego? Here. Commissioner Esparza? Here. Commissioner Lopez? Here. Vice Chair Gillum? Here. Chair Hyde? Here. Okay, great. So I'll turn it over to you, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, will everyone please rise and uh, repeat with me the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag, to flag, the flag of the United States of America, States of America. And, and to the republic to for which we stand, one, one nation, nation under God, one nation under God indivisible, 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 with liberty and justice for all. For all. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, do we need to do roll call of members? I again? no. I, I took that out, I took that out of order, um, uh, Chair. Okay. So if you want to move to the approval of the minutes. Okay. Next item is approval of the minutes. Please state your name. Who is approving it and seconding it, so they'll know to write their names down correctly. Okay. I'm Gillum, and I will approve it. Okay. So, I'll second it. This is Zerny. Okay. So we have uh, uh, Gilham and Asparza. Okay. Um. Roll call, please. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Abrego? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Esparza? Yes. Commissioner Lopez? Yes. Vice Chair Gillum? Yes. Chair Hyde? Yes. The next item is presentations, and I'll turn that over to you, John. Yes, thank uh, you. Before, John, before you start, uh, Chair Hyde, I just want to kind of remind everybody, because we're all on the phone, um, it's really easy to talk over everybody else at once. So before everybody talks, kind of pause for a minute because we're, so, since we're not there presently, somebody may be talking over and, and I can't hear. Okay, thank you, John. Thank you. Okay, so um, I'm going to just do a recognition of um, outgoing planning commissioners. Um, at this time, we would like to recognize the service of three dedicated Paramount residents, Roy Gillum, Jim Hyde, and Jaime Lopez, who have served as members and leaders of the Planning Commission, Development Review Board, and Economic Development Board. The City Council will be, will be presenting them with plaques at an upcoming City Council meeting, but we also want to give them our thanks, and I'd like to say just a few words about each one. Uh, Commissioner Gillum was appointed to the, commission, to the Planning Commission in 2003, to fill a vacant seat when Paramount residents elected Daryl Hoffmeyer to the City Council. Since that time, Commissioner Gillum has guided us through countless projects, plenty of housing projects, commercial proposals, conditional use permits. Roy Gillum is a voice of reason, a calming force, and has a big heart. He's been on a first-name basis with people experiencing homelessness and never made a big deal out of it. When, it's, when his neighbors got in a little over their heads with their home addition, he shared a bit of his first-class wood, first woodworking skill and gladly pitched in. Not only is he skillful with power tools, he has a green thumb, and we were lucky to get a glimpse of his lilies when we'd deliver commission binders to his house. We're going to miss you, Roy. Uh, Commissioner, uh, Commission Chair Hyde um, has been on the Planning Commission since 2007 when a spot opened up with Tom Hansen's election to the city council, and he got right to work. Jim Hyde has never been afraid to make good use of his gavel, and he's excellent at calling applicants up and getting them on the record that they'll follow through with their promises. He's been a strong ADA advocate and has always made sure that there are enough accessible parking spaces when it comes to retail and commercial projects. If anyone has seen Jim Hyde's house, you know this is a guy who lives in one of the coolest mid-century homes and has a good eye for design. Thank you, Jim. Uh, and finally, Jaime Lopez, Commissioner Lopez. Um, he may not be the longest serving planning commissioner, but Commissioner Lopez has had an enduring and unmistakably positive impact on commission decisions. Mr. Lopez grew up in Paramount, left for a few years for work and school, but never forgot about his hometown. When he returned from Northern California to pursue a PhD in urban planning, he made a point to return to Paramount. We appreciate the perspective he brought throughout his term as a car-free resident. He's paid close attention to bicycle infrastructure, and he's also had the 
health of residents in mind by pushing for trees that do better at cleaning the air. And um, it's been a pleasure uh, working with you, Commissioner Lopez. Uh, thank you. Next item on the agenda, public comments. Uh, no public comments. Okay, old business. Uh, first item on the agenda is the continued conditional use permit number 886, the request by the Towing Tow World Inc. to operate a business, and they're asking to uh, have this reviewed. First of all, we need to, this is the continued item, so I'll need a motion to close public hearing first and state your name so they'll know in the record who first and seconded it. Do I hear a motion? Yeah, I'll make a, go ahead. I was going to say, I'll make a motion to co uh, close it. It's, I'm Roy, I'll get them. Ernie Esparza will second it. Roll call, please. Uh, yes. Um, give me just one minute. Um, Commissioner Abrego. Yeah. Commissioner Esparza. Yes. Commissioner Lopez. Yes. Vice Chair Gillum? Yes. Chair Hyde? Yes. Next item on the agenda is uh, <coughs> conditional use permit number 858, update review of Big Ben's car wash at 16482 Paramount Boulevard in the C3 General Commission commercial zone. Uh, Commission Chair Hyde, if we could go back to the previous item and um, have you somebody make a motion to remove the item from oh, the calendar? Too bad. I'm sorry. Um, do I hear a motion to take this off of our agenda? Uh, yes, I'll make a motion. Oh, and I'll second it, Ernie Esparza. Roll call, please. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Abrego? Yes. Commissioner Esparza? Yes. Commissioner Lopez? Vice Chair Gillum? Yes. Chair Hyde? Yes. Okay. Now on to the next item. Update. A review of Big Ben's car wash at 16482 Paramount Boulevard on the C3 General Commercial Zone. This is just to uh, receive and file, please. I need a motion for that. Jaime Lopez. Make motion. a motion. I'll second. Jaime Abrego. Roll call, please. Yes. Uh, uh, Commissioner Abrego? Yes. Commissioner Esparza? Yes. Commissioner Lopez? Yes. Vice Chair Gillum? Yes. G uh, com uh, Commission Chair Hyde? Yes. Next item is new business, and it's a conditional use permit number 885, a request by Isaac Corrin. ICI Architectural Millwork, Inc. to operate a cabinet shop with the use of an exterior dust collection system at 14059 Garfield Avenue in the M2 Heavy Manufacturing Zone. Staff? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair and uh, members of the commission. Um, this item is a, a request to allow the operation of a cabinet shop with the use of an exterior dust collector and an indoor spray booth. And John King will handle this item. Thank you, John, and thank you, uh, Chair Hyde and Commissioners. Um, again, 14059 Garfield Avenue, and uh, this is at the southwest corner of Garfield Avenue and Quimby Street. See a little um, photo um, on, your, on your packet of slides um, showing the existing building. So onto the background slide, this is a, uh, again, a request to operate a cabinet shop with the use of an exterior dust collection system and it's in the M2 zone, and, uh, which allows for a cabinet or a carpenter shops with a conditional use permit. And you'll recall about a year and a half, uh, the Planning Commission and then the City Council um, approved changes to the manufacturing zones, the M zones, to um, what previously you only need needed a, um, a business license if you were a, a wood shop or a carpenter shop to open up. Um, you changed it so uh, a conditional use permit is required. So um, this 
I believe would be the the first of um, of these types of shops to have a, to go through this CUP process. So so it's a change for the benefit of the Paramount community. Uh, the lot is about 30,500 uh, square feet, and the building is about half that size. Uh, just a bit of, of history. Uh, the city attorney will recall, as a as city prosecutor, all the effort that went into um, addressing um, problems, really problems from the previous tenant. Now, the previous tenant was a, um, a spray booth manufacturer we actually went by a number of names, Spray Zone, Spray Booth Zone, Performance Systems, Spray Zone Net. It was the same, same owner, just kind of um, coming up with new names. <laughs> you know, you can only imagine. So um, here's some trucks, and there's an unpermitted spray booth in the back. Through the efforts of public safety, and especially the city prosecutor, um, this business is gone. There was a new property owner that took over. I was looking for a, a, a good tenant, and uh, the planning department reviewed a number of, of options, and a lot of them just did not work, was, were not good for the community. And this, this one, um, with the CUP, we see to be okay. So again, it's, it's to, uh, on to the next slide, a request to install a spray booth within the building and an, um, a dust collection system, the, mainly the, the dust collector itself on the outside, on the, to the rear of the building. And I'll show you the site plan in a moment. Um, the, uh, most of the other equipment would be inside the building, and there's a little area um, to the rear for, for the um, dust collector and small storage. So onto the, uh, the site plan, you'll see on the top Quimby Street running east and west. On the right is Garfield Avenue running north and south. The property is outlined in red. The building is um, outlined in blue, with a little bit of a blue highlight. And you can see in, in green where the, uh, the equipment would be located. So the, um, to the rear of the building, there's that small area, well, actually about 40, 40 feet in the back. Um, uh, the, the green represents where the, the dust collector would go. And you, you can see this is far away from the streets, as, about as far away as you can get to minimize um, visibility for aesthetics. Um, the spray booth would be inside. You'll see where, where that is on, on the inside. So all part of the woodworking process. Um, this is a good time to point out the, uh, the parking lot and the, um, there's a, uh, a recommended condition to restripe for um, ADA purposes and to touch up the, the little landscaped area and also to add a few trees in, in the front setback. There's just a little bit. Um, I'll show you a photo in just a moment. Here's what the dust collection system on the outside would look like. It's a Donaldson Torrent Model 460 IRD. Um, and you can see the dimensions there. It's 14 by 3.75 length and width. The height, it's about 10 feet in height. So uh, you really have to look hard to, to see it um, in relation to the, the gate, the side gate off of, off of Quimby Street. It's really tucked away. Here, Onto the, the photos, um, there's a, a photo slide. At the top is um, the building. So uh, that's looking at a southwesterly direction. And you can see some, if you look carefully, there's, there's some, some weeds on um, that photo. But particularly if you look at the bottom left photo on this slide, uh, kind of toward the back, uh, which is the, along the south property line of um, the south of the parking lot, um, it's pretty unkempt, uh, needs a little more maintenance. There's a condition to, um, to plant some shrubs there and, and fix it all up. And then you'll see the little space. Um, it, actually, it's may look a little wider than it is in reality, but, but by the camera angle, just a couple feet. There's a little bit of space between the, uh, the wheel stops and the, and the sidewalk. So there's a recommended um, condition of approval to plant at least three 24-inch box uh, trees. Um, and you can see on the right the uh, the gate. So again, you could bear, you'll will not be there will not be very much uh, visibility. We're also recommending it's actually not in the um, conditions in your um, report that we um, but we realize that there's um, upon further uh, uh, further look at the parking lot that there should be a condition to um, to reslurry it to do a, a quick uh, uh, reslurry to touch it up and restry it. So the next slide is the um, environmental uh, review. So the applicant um, contracted with a, uh, a planning consultant, an environmental consultant called Elevated Entitlements um, to review the act in terms of the uh, of CEQA, the California Environmental Quality Act. So it's applicable 
to uh, this project as with any project. And the uh, consultant paid uh, special attention to air quality impacts because um, of the, the woodwork and the possible dust. And they made the determination um, that there would be no significant impacts to air quality. Uh, the applicant would have to follow AQMD rules, you know, including the permitting and the, the operation of, of the business um, going along with uh, the, uh, the rules, uh, rule 1137 about um, particular uh, emission PM10 emission reductions from woodworking operations and rule 1155 PM10 emission reductions for dust collector operations. And just to recap about uh, PM, so PM is the, the particulates um, one millionth, um, PM10 is the term for particles smaller than 10 micrometers or one millionth of a meter. So down to the particle. Onto the conditions, so just to review, uh, for this kind of thing, you need a, a air a AQMD permit for the not only the spray booth, but the dust collection system. The applicant would also need uh, permits from the fire department and uh, the building and safety division of the planning department. Uh, cameras would uh, be installed, or actually the applicant has already installed uh, cameras, and again, the, uh, the parking lot to be uh, touched up. Um, and also to uh, have the 24-inch box trees. So with that, uh, we are recommending that you approve this, that you adopt resolution PC 2018, and um, I'd be happy to answer any questions. We do have the um, applicant's environmental consultant. Um, we have a, a phone number. If, we, um, if you have any questions, we can, we can call the, um, the environmental consultant. Thank you. Any questions this is from staff? Yes, this is Roy. I would like to uh, ask if there's a uh, sprinkler system in the building. I believe there is, and uh, I'm going to turn to plan uh, Associate Planner <laughs> Raina to, uh, to double check. Give me one moment. We're, we're actually going to call the applicant to double check on that. Okay. Um, bottom line, though, is um, the plans, once they submit, it will go through the, the, the plan check process. And um, if there's a requirement by AQMD and or the building code to install the sprinklers and they're not in there, they would have to ins install them as a requirement. Okay, that's what I need. Thank you. We should recap, actually, um, I don't know if we mentioned it, um, Building and Safety Manager Antulio Garcia is not in attendance this evening. Okay. The authority on these matters. Any other questions to staff, from the commissioners? No. No. Hearing none, none, I'll open public hearing. Do I hear a motion to open public hearing? Make a motion to open a public hearing. Ms. Gillum. Sparse, I will second it. Roll call, please. Commissioner Abrego? Yes. Commissioner Esparza? Yes. Commissioner Lopez? Yes. Vice Chair Gillum? Yes. Chair Hyde? Yes. Do we have any comments or anybody online that would have anything to say about this or is uh, in favor? No, sir, we don't. Okay. Anyone online or any comments or mail-ins are opposed? No. Okay. I need a motion to close public hearing. Gillum will open the, make a motion to open the, or close the public hearing. As far as I will second it. Roll call, please. Commissioner Abrego? Yes. Commissioner Esparza? Yes. Commissioner Lopez? Vice Chair Gillum? Yes. Chair Hyde? Yes. Okay. Oral reports? Oh, no, I need to make a motion for conditional use permit number 885. Do I hear a motion to approve this? <laughs> I'm sorry. I got to ask. I, I make a motion. I'm Gillum. I'll make a motion to open it. Okay. I think I heard Jaime first, and then Roy will use you as a second. Yes, I'll, I'll do the second. Okay. Roll call, please. Okay. Uh, Commissioner uh, Abrego? Yes. Commissioner Esparza? Yes. Commissioner Lopez? 
Yes. Commissioner, I'm sorry, uh, Vice Chair Gilham? Yes. Chair Hyde? Yes. Now on to oral reports. Any city council actions? Uh, yes. Last week, the um, city council approved a zone change on 72nd Street. You might recall you um, looked at that item in, it would have been March. It was the, uh, the liquor store and then the residential property. They were zoned industrial. So uh, you recommended that the zone be changed to multiple family residential, and the council approved that. Okay. Any city attorney, do you have anything to, to say anything to us? Uh, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to um, uh, tell you and the commissioners that will um, that I've been working with for so long. It's been a pleasure and an honor to work with you. Uh, I've really enjoyed uh, seeing the dialogue among all of you. You've done such a great job in uh, making really critical decisions on probably some of the biggest projects we've had in the city. And uh, I just want to appreciate and thank you for all the help that you've been given and, and all the assistance that I've been able to help you with in, in reaching those decisions. So I want to thank each and every one of you. And also... Commissioner Jaime Lopez, I would like for you to email me sometime, please. Absolutely. Okay, very good. Anything from uh, any of the commissioners on board? Any comments? Well, this is Gillum. I'd just like to thank John and all you guys for everything you've done for us, you know, and keeping us in line and doing the right thing. This is Chairman Hyde, I have the same thing to say. Um, I seem to get want to go a little fast. I want to get things done before calling on the right order sometimes. I do apologize for that, but it has been an honor and a privilege to serve these, these years, and uh, I wish you all the best in the future. Staff, any comments? Uh, no comments from staff. Thank you. Okay. This meeting is adjourned until June the 9th at 6 p.m. Ernie, it's all yours. Okay. The uh, <coughs> Paramount Development Review Board is called to order. Uh, roll call of members, please. Board Member Gillum? Here. Board Member Hyde? Here. Board Member Lopez? Here. Vice Chair Abrego? Here. Chair Esparza? Item one, uh, the minutes. Uh, item one is the approval of minutes of March the 10th. Make I need a motion. a motion. Make a motion to approve the minutes of March 10th. I'm Roy. I'm Miguel. I'm out for I, a second. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's been approved and second. Roll call. Board Member Gillum? Here. Board Member Hyde? Yes. yes. Board Member Lopez? Yes. Board Member Abrego? I'm yes. sorry, I'm sorry, Board Vice Chair Abrego? Yes. And Chair, Board Chair uh, Sparza? Uh, yes. Uh, any public comments? No public comments. Uh, new business uh, report is on item two, DRA number 2006. And uh, this is a request by Ronald Ballesteros, Form B Studio, incorporated for Torino Azul, LLC, to construct a 3,136-square-foot commercial building at 7351 Rosecrans Avenue in the C3 General Commercial Zone. Staff, please. Uh, yes, uh Thank you. Um, this item, uh, again, is a request to allow the construction of a pad commercial building at an existing shopping center that is located at the northwest corner of Garfield Avenue and Rosecrans Avenue. And our planning intern, Erica Barbero, will give you the details. And by the way, this is her first presentation. So uh, go ahead, Erica. Thank you, John. Uh, thank you, Chair Sparza and board members. Uh, as mentioned, today I present development review application number 2006 at 7351 Rosecrans Avenue by Form B Studio for Torino LLC. And the first photo on the title slide you will see here, it shows the plaza looking north from Rosecrans Avenue. 
the current uh, current tenants that are in the plaza are a subway, flower shop, an insurance office, and uh, taco restaurants. So again, the request is to construct a 3,136 square foot commercial building in the Gen C3 general commercial zone. Um, uh, the property owner submitted a development review application in 2008 for three structures on the property, but due to the recession, only two of the three were erected. Uh, so today the request is to build that third structure at uh, the southwest portion of the property. When complete, the structure will have three units to be leased. Uh, just note that there are no preferred tenants at this time. Um, let's see. So uh, currently the lot also has 56 vehicle parking spaces available, three of which will be ADA compliant. Okay. Uh, your third slide uh, shows an aerial view of uh, the plaza. So it's at the corner of Rosecrans and Garfield Avenue. Uh, the plaza is colored in purple, and the yellow is showing where the proposed structure will be located. Uh, to the north is an industrial area seen in the photos um, with the cars. To the east, there's a 76 gas station. To the south, a second gas station, and across the, and the across the street is the farmers market plaza. Okay. Uh, the site plan demonstrates where the Structure will be placed on the lot, again, demonstrating the 56 parking spaces available. The conditions of approval request that the applicant refurbish the landscape, install bicycle racks, and an electrical vehicle charging station. Uh, the next slide demonstrates the condition of the lot as it is uh, today. Periodically, it is unkempt and creates blighted conditions in the area. Uh, as mentioned before, once the project is complete, uh, the landscaping will be updated with drought-tolerant plants. Okay. On the next slide, you will see the elevations of the proposed structure. Uh, when complete, the, the exterior of the building will complement the other structures in the plaza. Uh, the building will have stone accents, arch elements, metal awnings, which are similar to the other buildings. Staff recommends the approval of the development review application 2006. Uh, and that concludes my presentation. I'll be happy to answer any questions. And the applicant has emailed a statement that he would like to be entered to the record. Oh, do you want to go ahead and read it, sure. Erica? Thank you. Uh, the intentions of the design was to make sure that it's similar to what it would have been if it were have been built during the original development. We believe the scale of the proposed is very similar in design and shape of the surrounding structures. And that is by Ronald Ballesteros from Formby Studio. Thank you. OK. Any comments from board members? I got a question. Ernie? This is Hanya. Go ahead. Hanya Brego. Yes, go ahead. Um, is there parking on Garfield Avenue as an overflow? or? parking on Rosecrans, uh, because if you count the number of amount of built uh, tenants, it's going to be 10 mm -hmm. locations. And if each location has two to three employees, it could be up to 20 to 30 cars parked at one time inside the facility. So I was just wondering if there's an overflow parking location. Uh no, uh, when I went to visit the site, uh, it's pretty busy. Um, and right across, or in the front of the proposed structure, there's a bus stop. So that area is out of the question. Um, but as far as I know, there is no overflow parking, and the main streets do not permit it at this time because of heavy traffic. Yeah, Mr. Chair, uh, I'm sorry, if I could add, uh, Commissioner Abrego, um, it does meet the, the, the city's parking requirement. Any other questions? And if we don't have any other questions, then I need a motion. I'll make a motion to approve 2006. This is Gillum. I second that. This is Lopez. First and second, I need. Approval. Roll call. 
uh, Commissioner, I'm sorry, Board Member Gillum? Yes. Board Member Hyde? Yes. Board Member Lopez? Yes. Board Vice Chair Abrego? Yes. Board Chair Esparza? Uh, yes. Uh, three is comments. Uh, any comments from board members? Staff? Uh, nothing from staff. Okay. The Paramount Development Review Board is adjourned till June 9th, 2020 at 6 p.m. Thank you. I'm the regular, the regular meeting of the Economic Development Board is called to order. May I have a roll call of members, please? Uh, yes. Uh, board Member Esparza. Yes. Board, yes. board Member Gillum. Yes. Here. Board Member Hyde. Here. Board Vice Chair Abrego. Here. Board Chair Lopez. Here. The first item is the approval of minutes for the month of what would be March. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the minutes? This is Esparza. I need to make a motion to approve the minutes of March 10th. This is Hyde. I recommend it. Whatever. Do, do we have a second? We had it from uh, Board Member Hyde. I, that's either Hyde or get, get, well, okay. I, either one of us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It has been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of March. May we have a roll call, please? Board Member Esparza? Yes. Board Member Gillum? Yes. Board Member Hyde? Yes. Board Vice Chair Abrego? Yes. Board Chair Lopez. Yes. Are there any announcements, comments, or questions from the audience not pertaining to items on the agenda? Uh, nothing. Okay. Item number two is the Assistant Director's monthly report. Doc, please. Uh, yes. Uh, Assistant Director King will give you an update on COVID-19. Thank you, John. And um, thank you, Board Chair Lopez. It, it's been a pleasure working with you here. So um, this is just a brief oral report. I don't have any, any slides to, uh, to accompany the report, so just, just be uh, verbal. Um, as you know, we're in the, we're in the middle of a you know, historic pandemic here, 100-year pandemic, perhaps. Um, we are looking ahead. We're, uh, you know, we, we started with, uh, with protecting the economic community and, but we are looking forward to, to recovery, and ideally that will be coming forward in the next few months. Um, but we are you know, taking our cues from the state of California and county health, um, the county health orders. We take, we take those very seriously. Um, you know, this is the planning department, so we, we do like to plan ahead, but um, we, I, I will be speaking in terms of the, of the city. So um, one thing I'd like to point out that we have um, established a, a business uh, recovery committee that, will, that has been... Um, in contact, and we'll be meeting in earnest um, and virtually in the um, in the coming weeks and months. And it consists of city staff, consists of the Paramount Chamber of Commerce, and a number of uh, businesses involved. Um, also, the Southeast Los Angeles County Workforce Development Board, um, Salaco, which is um, out of uh, Cerritos, and the city is. Um, has just recently uh, taken efforts, taken measures to, to join. And you, you may be aware of the Small Business Development Center, um, the Long Beach region, so SBDC, and they work out of the, uh, the chamber offices here in town. And um, so the, this group has, has formed the, the stakeholders from the business community. And the, the main thing is um, we're looking at a, a, a number of, of different ways. So you're looking at, at the business community in terms of employers with a special attention to small business and you're looking at the employees, so uh, workforce devel development, um, getting folks um, ready to, to get back into the workforce. As, as you know, we're um, looking at historic highs for, for unemployment. We're um, working together to um, develop a plan in coordination to, to, to help boost the local economy as we, as we recover. We're we are looking at some key sectors. And um, in addition to um, the business community, employees, residents, we have to keep the city in mind. So um, as you know, city services, 
to um, help assist in this effort are reliant on um, sales tax revenue. So it is, um, you know, in, as in previous briefings, as you're aware, it is kind of a, a circle, a circular, um, uh, you know, the circle of life in terms of the local economy. We're encouraging um, shop local. We're encouraging um, residents to to, um, to patronize these businesses. We're working together as a team to figure out how to um, best use uh, limited city funding and the limited resources we'll be getting from the federal government. We're getting special community development block grant, grant funds, ideally, to, um, to, to reach out to the community at large. Um, we should also like to point out there's been a number of efforts on the social media front to um, to get the its messaging to communicate um, uh, resources for for residents and businesses. Um, one one other uh, you know one one program to to note is uh, for restaurants and we're talking about um, some some sectors uh, we are far from um, having in. Um, in-house dining as we had before. So we're helping uh, restaurants promote their um, their takeout services um, by producing some banners promoting um, the takeout service. Um, so that's just a sample. We will be keeping the, uh, the board up to date in um, future months as these efforts um, take shape. Um, that concludes my report and happy to, to take any questions you might have. Any comments from other board members or staff? I have a comment. This is Jaime, Jaime Brego. So I, I saw that the city of Paramount was involved in a, a food giving um, to the needy family in Paramount. And um, I, I saw that and it was, it was a pretty big event. So congratulations on, or thank you um, for, for, for doing this, for being part of that program. Yeah, I'll second that. I'm Gillen. I agree. This is high. <laughs> yeah, right. Sparsa. <laughs> Great. <laughs> We should we should give credit to the um, the nonprofit community uh, nonprofit organization, um, a world of compassion that kind of led the charge with with this effort and um, through. It really was a. a a team effort, yeah. So some um, parts of the city, um, council member almost had a, had a huge part in coordinating um, the the SWAT meet. We have to um, give them credit for for get, uh, lending their their large space to um, you know with knowing how many cars and the the real need of the um, Paramount residents. You needed a, um, a location that would have that would minimize the impact to the city streets. So um, so kudos to the the SWAT meet as well. And. Uh, uh, just to, to piggyback on top of that, um, the re the city's recreation department did a fantastic job arranging all of this also, and the public works department was also heavily involved. So just um, congratulations to both of those departments on doing a, a well a well a well thought out event. Any other comments from board members or staff? Yeah, this is Jaime uh, Abrego again. Uh, I'm gonna miss you guys, your commissioner. Um, hi, uh, I miss all you guys. So I learned a lot from you guys. And yes, with Ernie's experience, um, we're gonna be able to move on because we're losing a lot of years of experience here on our commission. So I don't know. I, that's all I have to say. Thanks, Amy. Yes, yeah, uh, this is as far. Sparza, Sparza, Sparza. Yes, I'm going to miss you guys too. Uh, Lopez, Hyde, and of course Roy. So uh, it's been a really a pleasure to work with all you guys. Okay, so thank you very much. Thanks, Ernie. Thanks, Ernie. Yeah, thank you to everybody's comments. Um, I'd also like to add some comments of my own. Um, I don't have anything prepared here, but I, I do want to go down the list of um, the people who I want to specifically uh, thank. Um, I'll begin with the Johns, uh, John Cavanaugh, Carver, and King. I want to thank you for consistently having an open door policy, um, a willingness to share your knowledge and a civil and professional demeanor at all times. Um, it, it's been an absolute ple pleasure to learn from all of you and work with you 
and I can't thank you enough, and I hope that we remain in touch. Um, much work to do in the future, and even without being a planning commissioner, I hope to be part of many efforts going forward. Um, I want to just recognize uh, the young careers of Josephine and Erica. Um, Erica, good job on your first presentation today. I wish you all the best in your flourishing careers, and the same goes to you. I hope that we can also work together at some point and cross paths. Um, Reina, it, I uh, definitely also want to acknowledge your professionalism, your easygoing demeanor. Definitely going to miss um, you know, the professionalism that you bring to the table and appreciate all the work that you're doing. Um, Valerie is uh, always on task, always uh, very responsive uh, to everybody's needs and is extremely professional as well. I don't know if she's on this call, but I definitely appreciated working with Valerie. And uh, Danny Elizaris, who um, also at times um, provided uh, insightful uh, comments when we would be deliberating different uh, topics. And of course, my fellow commissioners, who not only have I grown to respect as fellow commissioners, but also as human beings who I've been able to share dinners with and uh, conversations about different aspects of life um, at this time with the ongoing pandemic. There are so many things that all of us uh, reflect on and reevaluate what's important, what's meaningful. And uh, thank you for being part of a very meaningful part of my life up until this point. And um, I wanna wish you all the best and also uh, my doors open, my email, my phone number, to anybody who I mentioned and uh, look forward to speaking more with you all in the future in person and stay healthy and stay safe. And I, those are my closing comments. Um, and with that said, I'll ask one more time if anyone has any more comments before we close this meeting. No. Okay. Since there is no further business, the meeting of May 2020 is adjourned to the next regular scheduled meeting in June of 2020. Um, the Economic Development Board uh, is now closed. All right. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Everyone.